Hello and welcome to my ridiculous hair. Uh, welcome to AM Language. I'm Richie. It's 4.30. And um, today we are going to look at the topic of the natural world. If this is your first time or you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. We are just one away from 800 subscribers. So make sure you click the subscribe button. And like and share the video as well. Irina F. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's lesson. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you are doing well. Um, so, um, in this, whilst we wait for people to join, I will let you guys know what we are going to do this week on the AM Language YouTube channel. So today is the natural world. We're going to try and build our vocabulary while talking about nature, the wild, well, wildlife, the natural world, you name it. Um, Tuesday, is the person a close or distant friend? Definitely join me for that one. Wednesday, failures and disappointments, turning negatives into positives. Um, and then on Thursday, language quiz. Uh, so make sure you join me for that. There won't be a lesson on Friday. Um, unfortunately, um, I won't be able to give a lesson on Friday. So Friday, no lesson. Uh, but every day, every other day of the week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So that is what you guys can expect. Um, now, on the subject of the natural world, you might be thinking, is Malta a place from the natural world? And the answer is yes. There is, there is a there's a lot of nature and there's a lot of the natural world that you can experience. Um, if you want to really try and experience it, then you would have to do scuba diving. Um, I would say, generally speaking, Malta being an island, uh, the richness of nature is more to do with what's under the sea than is than on land. Now, it's not to say there aren't a few nice parts to go walking. But to experience nature in Malta, it's going to involve the sea life. Now, you might think, okay, can I, what wildlife can I see? Well, um, you've got a rich range of underwater life in Malta. Um, you, you, okay, the things that you could see, um, not always, but technically you can find sea turtles. Um, sea turtles are actually quite a big thing in Malta. Um, there's been a lot of effort to help uh, protect sea turtles. The biggest danger with sea turt when it comes to sea turtles is the danger of fishing uh, because they get caught in the nets. You can see dolphins. Well, you can see dolphins. I think one of the interesting things about uh, the last 12 months, because there was less fishing, uh, the dolphins returned to Malta. You could actually see them in the harbour even. So in theory, you can see dolphins. And some people last year saw it managed to get a fantastic sort of, some amazing shots of dolphins in the Maltese waters. Um, some of you might wonder, what about sharks? Now, Sharks in Malta are very, very rare. Um, and on top of that, finding a dangerous shark is extremely rare. Um, it's the most dangerous thing in the sea around Malta, usually, is going to be the underwater current. And maybe, okay, it's not going to kill you, but now and again you get some jellyfish, but they're not particularly dangerous. So the most dangerous thing in Malta when it comes to the sea is the underwater current. Like I said, sharks, 
Oh, very, very, very rare. Um, I've never seen a shark. And I know many people who have uh, gone scuba diving for years in Malta, and they've never seen a shark. So occasionally you hear some people saying that they saw a shark, but very, very, very rare. Um, and if you go swimming where it's popular, that's for sure. Uh, we just don't get sharks really very often. I think it, I think if you were to come across a shark, you'd have to swim out a long, long way. You'd have to be in a dangerous, you know, open water sort of thing. Very, very rare that you come across a shark. Um, so, Lee and Dina, good afternoon as well. Welcome to today's lesson. Um, now, in terms of other elements of nature, uh, octopuses, uh, well, octopus, you can find that in Malta, um, and, well, lots of other small creatures as well, like crabs, small fish. Land animals, you can find a few birds, um, but it's not known for its land animals, I'll be honest. Evelina, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to today's lesson. So some words that we need to make sure that we fully understand that we're going to look at today. Oh, I was writing. We need to make sure that we know all the word wildlife. We'll need to know the word habitat, that's for sure. Um, those two are, are particularly important. Um, and then as we go along, we'll discover a few more lang bits of language that we can uh, that we can look look at. Um, I think considering we're talking about the natural world and we're not just going to talk about Malta, uh, we can also um, talk about oh, nope, I spelled that wrong. Here we go. We'll have to talk about uh, the word ecosystems or ecosystem. That's important to know. Food chain. Um, I imagine uh, some of you might have an idea um, of that as well. So these are four important words that we will need to know as we discuss this. Um, as for you guys, let me know. Uh, What's your favorite? Thing? What's your favorite um, scenery in nature? Now, scenery, in case you're not too sure, that's a question. Uh, scenery as well. So, that's an uh, scenery is a uh, landscape, okay, or, or view. So we've got wildlife, habitat, and ecosystems, and food chain. I'm now going to give you some example sentences, and we are going to have to do, make sure that we look to link the words to their correct uh, meanings. I'm going to put them into sentences, though. So let's go with a... So we've got A, uh, this has a rich ecosystem full of different creatures. Next one. Uh, Evelina says that her favorite uh, scenery in nature is a sunset by the sea. That's lovely. Sunset by the sea. Always very good. See. And 
being. And it's dangerous to upset the food chain. So these are sentences with the words. Now let's see if you guys can link them to their meaning. One. Finally, four. Which one am I missing here? Done that one, I've done that one. Ah, that's the one I hadn't done. Okay, so we've now done all of them. So we've got A, B, C, D. We need to link them to meanings one, two, three, four. Here we need to think about the words wildlife, habit, ecosystems, and food chain. So let me know what you uh, what you think the answers are, and then we can have a discussion. Uh, I know that recently we looked a little bit at, um, at grammar, grammar, quite a lot at grammar. And you, you guys who are doing print immediate, and you know you'll, you'll be looking at grammar this week. Same with intermediates um, and upper intermediates, but it's sometimes nice just to concentrate on language in terms of the vocabulary being used. That can always be sometimes a little bit better to do. So let me know what your you you guys put there. Now, in terms of your favorite landscape, your favorite scenery, Evelina said sunset by the sea, and sunset by the sea is really good. I would also say the mountains. Um, like, um, I don't know about sunset. I mean, sunset in the mountains, sunrise in the mountains, midday. If it's a good day, it doesn't matter. Mountains look great. Um, maybe sunset or sunrise, I suppose, with mountains. Um, I think in terms of nature, I don't know. I, I think when it comes to nature, I think one of the nicest bit, there is something nice, obviously, about being on a nice beach. But I think equally, there's also something really nice about being in the countryside or right in wild you know in nature itself walking through the mountains that's great that's also really good so let me know what you think the answers are here we're looking at wildlife uh don't forget that okay so we've got wildlife habitat uh habitat um ecosystems um and food chains so or food chain. So we need to link these sentences A, B, C, D, which uses this language, and we need to link it to uh, to the meanings in one, two, three, and four. Sorry, I do not know why I am yawning. Leandina says B goes with two, D goes with three, A goes with four, C goes with one. If you agree with Leandina, let me know in the live chat section. Um, I need water and I don't think I had chocolate today. Mm -hmm. Evelina says that she agrees with me and Dina. Okay, so B is two. Whales and dolphins should be left in their natural habitat. Uh, sorry. 
Ah, yes. So B, whales and dolphins should be left in their natural habitat. Oh, I see. I just used the same word. Well, no wonder B is two. I did not realize that. Well, silly me. But then clearly that is the correct answer. Um, we've got... Okay, this has a rich ecosystem full of different cultures. A going with four. We'll see about that. Um, ba, ba, ba. Then you're saying D goes with three. Okay, let's remind ourselves. What is D? It's dangerous to upset the food chain. So D goes with three. What animals eat? Okay, and you're saying then C1. Uh, wildlife range of animals. Okay, cool. Let's see what the correct answer is are here. A. So, answers. A goes with four. Yeah. Uh, a biological community is the ecosystem full of different creatures. Correct. Actually, did I interchange these? No, it's fine. I didn't. Okay, so A is four. The animals and natural environment. Um, what? Yes, B goes with two. C. Africa has uh, an incredible range of wildlife. One. And that leaves us with D that you guys said was three. Let's just remind ourselves. It's, a da it's, da it's dangerous to upset the food chain. Three. Good. Well done. Excellent. So well done there, guys. Those are the correct answers. So if you got that correct, well done. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. What's your favorite... What is your favorite um, place for wildlife? Inda says, my, scene, my favorite scenery in nature is the sea, even though mountains are appealing too. Yeah, I think it's always going to be between the sea and the mountains. Both represent chaos, both represent sunshine and peace, depending on the weather. But those are good choices. It's hard to say no. Uh, I suppose you could always say lakes, a lake, for example, if you are close to a really nice lake, uh, that could work. So, guys, those are the answers. But what's your favorite place for wildlife? Now, my favorite place for wildlife uh, that I've experienced, I mean, I think there are two different options. If we're going to go with a range of wildlife, um, that we have not visited. I could go for somewhere like South Africa. Now, I know because South Africa has a lot of wildlife, but I've never been. In terms of my own personal experience, gosh, that's between somewhere in South America. Oh, what am I saying? The I know which country wins this for me in terms of wildlife. Well, place, really. The Galapagos Islands. Galapagos, how could I nearly forget this? So the Galapagos Islands, um, I've been lucky enough to have gone to the Galapagos Islands. Um, and yeah, that was the most impressive wildlife I've seen. Uh, be it on, I mean, plenty of good wildlife on land, yes. But the sea, wow. Really, really impressive. I would say if you guys ever go to the Galapagos, make sure you have a waterproof GoPro. You are going to need it. The underwater life is phenomenal. Okay. So when you want to say, wow, this is, you know, incredible. Okay. You can say, 
you can say phenomenal, for example. Um, it's spelt with a PH, but it's phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. So let me ask you guys, what's uh, my favorite place for wildlife is the woods. Uh, okay. Um, I suppose it depends what type of wood you mean. I mean, you've got some big woods, you've got some small woods. The bigger the wood, the better. Um, actually, let me ask you. Um, yeah, I've asked you for scenery and places, but what about country? What's the best country you've been to when it comes to wildlife? That's a difficult question. I've been to quite a few places, so let's see if I can do it. But please come in if you can answer that question. South America? Okay, pick your country. New Zealand? Yes. Australia? A lot. Um, you know, again, I think it's going to have to... Okay, if I said, what's the best country you've been to when it comes to wildlife? I'm going to have to say Ecuador, but that's because Ecuador um owns the galapagos i can't really go against the galapagos so technically it's um, it comes under ecuador but let me know what you guys think in the live chat section here's a question for you what's the worst place you've been to when uh in order to see wild life uh Lindin says australia is was up there for her and i would agree australia has a rich diversity of of animals for me what's the worst place you've been to been to not to to So what's the worst place you've been to in order to see wildlife? I think the worst place I've been to. You know what? That's a really difficult one. Let me know. Hi, Francesca. Not to worry if you're late. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're, just, we're talking about the natural world. Um, worst place I've been to for wildlife. Uh, Valina say New Zealand. Is that the best? It, does that answer? So what's the best country you've been to when it comes to wildlife? I'm guessing New Zealand is comes under that. I've been to New Zealand. And they've got some really good wildlife. So it's definitely not the second question. What's the worst place you've been to in order to see wildlife? Um, New Zealand was brilliant. Uh, I Everywhere I went, I saw wildlife. I saw plenty of whales. So I can't complain. Vancouver, a lot of wildlife that you could, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't too difficult to see. Probably Malta, actually, on land. Malta on land, nah, not very much. It's all about the sea. Uh, Leo Dean says, I've never experienced a bad travel. You've never, you've never had a bad traveling experience. Well, you are lucky. Bad traveling experiences. Oh, they are tiring. The Indian, they are tiring. It, uh, and they, they end up not being very enjoyable. Um, if you can afford to fly comfortably, then I would recommend go comfortably. Much better. Okay, so we've talk, spoken about one or two things. Um, cause of time i don't think i'll do the full 45 minutes today um so we've had this little look now here's a question for you guys okay francesca says first my country angola second i think kenya botswana and south africa so heavy on the african side of things well let me ask you guys this um
Are you an animal lover? Do you love animals? Do you like having animals in the home? Do you like uh, to have animals when you go to the office, for example? Um, do you like spending more time outdoors? Do you prefer spending time indoors? All of these questions have to be asked when we're trying to answer a, a question like this. Are you an animal lover? Okay, so Lee and Dina has said um, that she's an animal lover. Let me know what your favorite animal is. And speaking of this, have you ever been to a zoo? Again, I don't know about the whole um, zoo thing. I know it's very popular. I know plenty of people go, but I don't know. I, there's something about it I don't like. I, I think it's like I don't like the idea of animals being locked up in a cage. I think it's just really un unhealthy. I think it's very bad, and I think it's potentially very dangerous. So I'm not in favor of it. Um, let's see. Um, have you ever been to the zoo? Let's ask one other question. It's very bright where I am today, so the, the glare is strong on my on my eyes, which is why I'm closing my eyes quite a lot. Um, have you ever been to a zoo? Yeah, let me know what you think about zoos. I don't really like them. Yes, I love animals very much, says Evelina. Yeah, I think animals... I, th I think it depends on the type of animal. Um, most animals should be in the wild. Um, you can understand why, you know, dogs and cats aren't. But really and truly, if it's a big cat, if it's a big dog... They need to be outside. It's difficult to have them inside. Um, what else? Yeah, um, I've never experienced a bad, uh, some bad traveling. Well, Leon Dean, like I said, I mean, you're very lucky. I think the last time I traveled between Malta and Dublin, I had a 10-hour wait in transit in the... Um, in the main area where people were waiting for for planes that was very very tiring i remember not not necessarily enjoyable either okay uh francesca says i appreciate elephant uh, oh elephants we are more what's that we are more oh sorry we are more than this animal more than this animal I appreciate that. Okay, I think I know what you're going for. I had to read that a few times, Francesca. So, more about them. I think this is a moment for them because it doesn't feel like you're talking about yourself, you're talking about animals in which case you're gonna to have to go with them so your example sentence here is i appreciate elephants because we tend to learn more about them that makes a lot more sense uh evelina says i'm very fascinated by wolves yes actually i've got a good one on wolves and finally less uh leandina says when i went to australia i visited the wildlife park there were animals with there are animals were free it has been Incredible. Okay, so I'm glad that you found something good there. Um, wolves. There's something called... Um, here's a little word for you guys. I don't know if it's something that you guys would have looked at. I very much... I very, very much doubt it. It's called rewilding, and it involves wolves. Now, some of you might know this, but in Africa, no, not Africa, in Canada, they removed, and the North United States, they had removed all the wolves. They'd taken the wolves out of the ecosystem. And then they found that there was a problem. Certain animals that once had predators exploded in numbers, and... The food chain has been disrupted. It doesn't work anymore. So they reintroduced 
wolves. And they found that the riverbank had changed. Um, and they found that the wolves, okay, they hunt in packs. They get to know about wolves a bit more. Um, but they play a very, very important role in maintaining life. So I don't think wolves, I think wolves get an unfair press at times, if I must say so. They are quite clever as well. Now, they're not to be confused with a husky or anything. But, and it's interesting because even though they are related, you can't teach a wolf what you can teach a dog. It's well known. It's probably a bad idea as well. Um, okay. So, guys, we are coming down to the last five or so minutes of the lesson. Like I said, today I'm going to have to cut the lesson just a little bit short. And don't forget, next week on – no, this week on Friday, no lessons. Um, but there will be lessons on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, let me ask you guys another question when it comes to – when it comes to fish. Um, and I'm thinking in terms of the way to cook fish. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, like I was saying, I lost my tra trail of thought. So, um, overall... I didn't finish actually finish off explaining what rewilding was. I started talking about wolves and I didn't finish. I just remembered. Thing is, when they, um, in North America and Canada, they had removed all the wolves. So all these animals that exploded, basically. And they found that things returned to normal when they reintroduced the wolf. That was it. It's called rewilding. Very interesting. So if you like wolves, definitely check it out. It shows the necessity for having a predator. You always have to have something at the top of the food chain that eats others. Otherwise, it, it the food chain is disrupted. It's upset. So it definitely, uh, it's called rewilding, and I do suggest looking at it. It's very interesting. Um, but yeah, I completely lost my trail of thought there for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, guys, let me ask you another question to do with nature, and that is, well, or should I say, the natural world. Um, well, let's put it this way. So two questions here. Do we make a big difference to the natural world? And if so, what must we change? This is, I think it's fair to say, do we make a big difference to the natural world? I think it depends what source you get. A lot of sources are going to say that we do have, that we do make a difference in our world in terms of the environment. We can create our own environment. I think that's important to remember. Um, we have the ability to create our own environment. So, uh, you know, so do we make a big difference? Yeah, I think we do. I think we do make a big difference. Uh, whether it's something to do with farming, uh, drilling for oil, uh, looking for plastic, metal. Um, I think, yeah, we clearly do make a big difference to our natural world. So therefore raises this interesting question, if so, what must we change? So let me know, what must we change when it comes to helping the natural world be good for us? Uh, what things can we do? Does it make sense? Is it practical? Uh, is it economical, for example? Probably one of the biggest problems, finding something that, like this that's, you know, if so, what must, must we change? I mean, there are some people that say that, no, that doesn't need to be changed. They just need to be better at what they do with what they have. So let me know what you think. Do we make a big difference to the natural world? If so, what must we change? I think the second one is, 
It's one of those ones where you feel the answer is going to be yes. I think that's the case anyway. Okay, guys, we'll soon be coming to the end of today's uh little lesson. Like I said, I wanted to concentrate on a bit more vocabulary today and not too much either. So we looked at uh, wild wildlife, um, very important. We looked at habitat, ecosystem, uh, food chain. Uh, these are important basics that we need to know. Tell me actually, What's the best natural habitat you have seen an animal enjoy? That's probably a harder question. Um, what's the best natural habitat you have seen an animal in enjoy? Um, you know what? After I've said Galapagos, it's very difficult difficult to pick another country other than that, well, another place other than the Galapagos. Maybe New Zealand. In New Zealand, I saw lots of whales. I saw sperm whales as well. Um, a lot of natural wildlife, a lot of nature. I think actually New Zealand is a very enjoyable place for a lot of animals. Neodina says, yes, we have deep impact on natural life. We have to change our perspective and not consider men in the center of the world. Interesting political one there, Leandina. Um, um, very, uh, yes, quite a political one there. Uh, Evelina says it's complicated for me to explain, but we all have to change to save nature. Yeah, I think it's sometimes even the small things make a big difference. Like, one of the things I've tried to do is stop buying plastic when possible. So, if I have a choice between a plastic bottle and a glass bottle, I will buy the glass bottle. The glass can uh, return to the earth easily and naturally while plastic no plastics you can't ever fully break down plastic once you made it that's the terrible thing um i think as well for instance even just like cleaning up to be honest i think that's one of the big things about beaches in the summer you walk along the beach and you see a lot of rubbish people living living leaving all sorts of things on the beach. And it, it's very responsible. One of the things that, that I think is a particular problem is also cigarette butts that people just flick away onto the beach sand. But in reality, if we're thinking about it, quite a lot of wildlife can be found on it within the sand. And some animals need, you know, they might see a cigarette butt and think it's food. So I think it is a bit of a problem. Well, guys, um, I should say, uh, like I said, this was just a vocabulary one to do with, um, what was I going to say, uh, to do with the natural world. We didn't get into involved in any grammar. It's important that we remember those key words, uh, but unfortunately, we're coming to the end of the lesson. Francesca says, the best natural habitat I have seen, cold current Bengulia. Well, I didn't know. I've never tried that. I've never been uh, I don't know what that is, actually. Um, best natural habitat. Yeah, I'm going to say the Galapagos, but I think there's lots of countries that come quite close to it. Evelina says, man has little respect for nature. I'm guessing in this context, um, you're using man to mean man as in humanity, meaning both men and women. Um, that's how it, it sounds anyway. I mean, it is often, it is common, by the way, that when we use man in English, historically, we use man when we're talking about something in general, uh, man to be both, it's just another word for humanity. Uh, so both uh, men and women, that's how we can use man. And that's how it sounds like. I'm not sure if that is what you mean, though. Um, this is Angola, Nam uh, Nambia, and South Africa. All of these, all those countries, absolutely wonderful for natural nature. 
um, the natural environment. And Evelina says, okay, thank you. Yes, that's because I'm coming to the end of today's lesson. So, guys, unfortunately, I have to cut the lesson short just by five minutes today. But I will be back tomorrow um, with more live English lessons. And there's more videos coming. Um, there should be some more videos coming as, uh, coming as well. So lots of exciting things. Tomorrow, the person. this is a good one tomorrow. I'm looking forward to the lesson tomorrow. Is the person a close or distant friend? Now, this is a good one. Will we have a bit of grammar? Maybe. But this is going to be mainly building vocabulary with make sure, make sure that we're talking about someone else with the right words. So definitely join me for that. Wednesday, failures and disappointments turning negatives into positives. Really important. Something that I think is, has become quite important during COVID, actually. So please join me for that. Um, and another thing as well, please make sure you like and share the video. Subscribe. That's really important. Make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel. And um, like I said, don't forget, guys, this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, no lesson on Friday, uh, unfortunately. You too, Evelina. Have a great week. Have a great evening. Leandina says, thank you, Richard. I'll uh, be back on Wednesday. Nice evening. You too. And thanks, Richard. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, Irina. Uh, tomorrow, I hope to be able to bring more energy to the lesson. Um, today, as you can probably see, I'm just feeling a little bit tired. So tomorrow, I'll be coming in with a lot more uh, energy. So, guys, thank you so much. Take care and bye for now. See you tomorrow as well, Francesca. Take care. Bye for now.